Hey, good afternoon, good afternoon. Beautiful Sunday down here at the, in the tent encampments down in Noma on 2nd and L and 2nd and M Northeast in Washington, D.C. A couple blocks just from the capital, uh, the nation's capital. 16 some blocks from that, that public housing at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, that public housing where I think I saw that, you know, a guy who is having credit problems and has had multiple baby mamas going to have to leave the residence down at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in that public housing unit that he occupies right now. And so that's, I think that's a blessing. That's, that's some good work on the, on the right end, you know, where hopefully we can find some ways to work together in solidarity so that nobody has to live on the street, so that nobody has to be hungry, so that nobody has to do without. And so I, I'm hoping that this is a step in the right direction, the results that we you know, received yesterday regarding our, our change, uh, at least in, in political leadership. But for change, to, for it to happen, and the way it looks on the ground, um, I think a lot more has to be done, and there has to be some, some reckoning, some acknowledging and some understanding of the challenges that, that the folks who, I'm not sure if they feel a difference today in their, in their um, ideas about how they're going to change their current situation, specifically folks who live down here in the tent encampments down in Noma, a couple of blocks from Union Station. Uh, but I know a guy who always be talking about this election and was worried to death. And I always try to tell him to calm down, but he don't listen to me. Uh, you know, he, he has a lot of hope and that's a blessing because we need him. He's one of the lead organizers with our lead partner, the, the People for Fairness Coalition, uh, Mr. Wa Robert Warren. And I want, want the audience to see how Mr. Warren feels about, about all, these, all these changes. Um, with the new administration. And this is, this is Mr. Robert Warren. Mr. Warren, get in the light over here, brother. Get in the light over here. Yeah. Yes, sir, how do you feel about the, the, you know, the new, new uh, leadership uh, in our country? I don't know, man, you know, in, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful and I'm grateful, you know, but I'm still a little to the point where I feel like, you know, there's, there's need to be a level of accountability for the president's negligence and his administration, you know. Uh, I know we had a lot of COVID deaths here in the District of Columbia. I know I'm someone who has personally, you know what I'm saying, had to mourn and, 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 and grieve, you know, a loved one, my mom, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, one of my goddaughters, you know, good friends, you know, who were lost to COVID-19 and, uh, and so, you know, and, I, and a lot of that, you know what I'm saying, I hold the president responsible for it because it's under his watch. And I still think there needs to be a level of accountability. But, uh, you know, I think he's, he's a criminal, criminal, you know, criminal person that's in the White House. And, you know, uh, and I am relieved that, you know, he will no longer be, you know, the president of the United States. But, yeah, I mean, just comments he made concerning low-income people and them, him keeping them out of the suburbs away from white women. It's just, you know, and me being Muslim American, you know, his, his, his stance against Muslim Americans and saying that we hate America. When I was born in Washington, D.C., so I don't, I don't get that, but I don't know, man. Uh, well, well, I'm just one really of my, grateful, bro. I'm really one, grateful. One of my questions is, with the change in administration, what do you expect for the people who live out here? What I mean, can what can they expect? You know, I mean, how how do we how do we make sure that uh, the people who do live out here don't have to live out here anymore? And what do we have to do? Who do we have to talk to? Who can we talk to to make sure that everybody receives that basic human right to live in a house, to have housing? Man, you know, you know, it's a uh, trickle down or trickle up. So. Uh, I don't really, it don't make a difference to me whether you call it a Democrat or Republican because, you know, under, under a Democratic watch in this city right here, we're having this increase in homelessness. When they put forth a budget, they actually cut 
homeless vouchers and, and, and access to, you know, low income housing for needy residents during a, a national health emergency. So you learn what people's priorities is, so the fight goes on. You know what I'm saying? We've been fighting this Democratic mayor in this city of Washington, D.C. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they give lip services, but I'm one of those people I learned how to count very well. And I know that low-income people in this city haven't been getting their fair share. And, and buildings like this represents that. You know, and that's what, that's what it represents. You know, and, and they build these buildings not for D.C. residents. They build them buildings for new residents, not for us. And so, and I don't have a problem with that either, but they need to build for us also. As they build for the new residents, they have to build for the residents that's here and the needs of the residents that's here. And that's only fair. And I'm with an organization called People Fairness Coalition, and I, I believe that's only fair. That's so, right, brother. That's right. You well, know, you heard it here from the man who, he works very hard. Hey, we have it, we have a growing you, growing tent encampment, growing tent encampments, and and so we have a lot of people who are moving to the street um, in the last couple of months, and, and Mr. Mr. Robert Warren he supports them four days a week, and he's a blessing to us in our work, and we're gonna keep out here, no matter who's in office, because right. clearly the work is still has to be done, you know, Definitely. Definitely. and so I'm hoping we have you know, more friends in powerful places that will help us in solidarity of making sure that everybody has the right to housing and that everybody is housed. And I guess that's all we can do. Keep fighting, keep demonstrating what the work really looks like. And listen, I, I, I'm really, really proud of all the people who felt, you know, hey, listen, to vote was being a part of the solution, being part of, of what it's necessary to do to to you know to participate and, and I, and I in this in this engagement thing though, bro. you know i had a, a good friend of ours one of our mentors and a really <laughs> wonderful lady and human being uh you know miss marcy burnbein you know what i'm saying just been with people Fairness coalition and really working on public restrooms and some other things in the city to make it more accessible to low-income residents but her daughter who's a doctor in Boston was on her way to vote, was struck by a car and killed. And I just want everybody to send their prayers and, 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 and thanks and hopes out to her, man, because, you know, she's just a really wonderful person, human being, you know what I'm saying, who really cares about people and is fighting for people. And one of those people that don't have to be doing what she's doing, you know, because, you know, she's worked and, and had the means where she can be retired and not even, you know, engaged, but, you know, that's, that's the people that, you know what I'm saying, that I really, you know, just feel so thankful for. The same ones who came out and voted. 74, over 74 million Americans, unprecedented, and, and this, this country actually came out and we elected Joe Biden and Ms. Harris, first female president. I mean, we made history, so what can we say? We and made I'm, history. I'm for that. We made history. Well, yeah. listen, we made history over the last week. Let's Nobody keep... will never forget 2020. That's, That's right. Sure. Let's keep making history by doing the work uh, <laughs> yeah. in 2021, right. 22. Yeah. Doing it on January 1st, 2021. There's work to be done. Um, you did vote. Great. That was one day, one one piece of action that you could do. There's plenty of action left right. to Go do. On. That's not the only work. That's not the only way. Go Voting on. is just a tactic. It's not the outcome that we're actually looking for. Um, what we are looking for is to make sure that people who are the most marginalized by the current system actually ha have an opportunity to benefit from what those promises that are made by those that we just elected into, into office. So on that note, I promise you I'll be working very hard to organize many more people to hold those leaders who made these promises to us for our vote. What I don't like is the fact that I believe black people, unfortunately, we do so much to protect this country and we expect so little. And we're gonna work very, very hard to change that. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful week. Let's get to work.